Today on MTG Unpacked, it's Warhammer 40k release weekend and we're getting stuck into the Necron Dynasties Collector Edition Commander deck. So the commander here is Zazarek, the Silent King, and I'm sure people will comment on my pronunciation there. Uh, we've got the Necrons with a 100 card, card Surge Foil deck with 42 new cards, Surge Foil Display Commander. 10 double-sided Surge Foil Token Cards, sensing a theme here. Deck Box, Life Wheel, Strategy Insert, and Reference Card. Alright, so let's get into it. These things are pretty much sold out everywhere. Uh, the market price for the whole set, you're looking like about, uh, I'm going to say like 800 something range. So they're not cheap at all. I was able to pick these up from my local game store for about 180 a piece, somewhere in there. So let's see what we got here. Interesting box, like everything is like together. So I see what they've done here. So the the deck is in the side and looks like a deck box also. And you've got the usual punch outs here. So that's pretty cool. And then here is our deck box. That's also shiny. Get that in focus. Nice and Necron on the back there. That is fantastic. Okay. And you're probably, let's see here. Would you be able to fit sleeved? Yes, you could fit the cards in here sleeved. Okay, what else we got? The uh, life counter goes up to 40. Yep. And then counting down on the other side. Let's take a look at the flyer here. And this is going to be awesome. So usually they give you some lore, he <coughs> lore here. So we've got this Necron. Get him in focus. Some nice artwork. And on the other side... Okay, so it's really just artwork here. No info about the deck. That's curious. Okay. And then these Surge Foils, yes, they do curl, so we'll see how badly in the course of the video. So let's get into it. And there's usually a display commander here. Yeah, that was my main question. Are they going to curl? You can see already out of the plastic they're really curling. So the display commander here. Thicker card stock, so this is purely for display. You would not shuffle this into your deck. And let's take a look at the commander here. So it's a mythic. So we've got Zarek, the Silent King, legendary artifact creature, Necron. He's a mythic. 3-4 four for 4 with flying, and he has My Will Be Done. Whenever Zarek, the Silent King, attacks, mill 3 cards. You may put an artifact creature card or vehicle card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. And I like the foiling on here, sort of like a diagonal, like, lightning strike type effect. I think they might have done this in the past with like a, um, a special promo card. If you know what that is, leave a note in the comments. So I normally separate out the mana base here. So we've got mana and tokens, and I think there was going to be... They talked about some of them had like a rare in the token slot, so not sure what that was about. Okay, so let's take a look at our nice Pringles here. We have Immotech the Stormlord, legendary artifact creature, Necron. It's a 3-3 for 4, it's a mythic. It has Phaeron, whenever one or more artifact... Cards, leave your graveyard, create two 2-2 two, two black Necron Warrior artifact creature tokens. And it has Grand Strategist. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target artifact creature you control gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains menace until end of turn. Okay, so cranking out the tokens and pumping creatures. I should also say there is a non-foil version of this deck. You're looking at close to $90 at the time of filming. The prices are all over the place right now, but... Hopefully you can get a good deal. I think this is probably the best of the four decks. Next up we got Flayed One. Artifact Creature Necron 4-1 for 3 with Lifelink has Flesh Flayer. When Flayed One enters the battlefield, mill 3 cards. Those suspected of carrying the Flayer Curses summarily banished lest the corruption spread 
to other Necrons. Some nice flavor there. And Hexmark Destroyer, Artifact Creature Necron 6 6 for 6 has multi threat eliminator. Hexmark uh, Destroy can't. Oh, Hexmark Destroyer, okay. Can't be blocked except by 6 or more creatures. And we have Unearth for 4 and 2 black, so you pay that. Return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step, or if it would leave the battlefield, unearth only as a sorcery. So you, you can tell already, tons of unique cards in these decks. I don't imagine they'll be able to reprint them anytime soon. We got Plasmancer, artifact creature, Necron Wizard, 3-3 three, three for 4 with flying, fly, flying, I'm mixed up from the other card, flying, Dynas, Dynastic Advisor, when Plasmats are enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic swamp card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Masters of Dimensional Dissonance, Singularity, Manipulation, and countless other technologies, Plasmats are terrifying to behold. And we have a Psychomancer, Artifact Creature, Necron Wizard, 1-1 one, one for 2, with Flying Harbinger of Despair, whenever a Psychomancer or another non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield. Target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Okay, so there may be some synergies here with the graveyard. We've got Sawtech Immortal, artifact creature Necron 223 with Flash as elite troops. Sawtech Immortal enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature that died this turn. Nothing clears the battlefield like a Death Strike Missile. Wait, is something moving out there? Says Commander Xander Atlan Talan, 115th Armoured Regiment. And Scorpec Destroyer, Artifact Creature Necron 4 2 for 4. Death Touch has Hyperphase Threshers. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Scorpec Destroyer gains first strike until end of turn. And in the interest of time, I think I'll be skipping over the flavor text. You can uh, pause the video and w read that. We've got Triarch Praetorian, Artifact Creature Necron 2-1 for 2. Flying has Dynastic Codes. So when it enters the battlefield from a graveyard, you draw two cards and you lose two life. Okay, so there's some of that graveyard synergy I was talking about. This one has Unearth for 4 and a black. We've got a Night Scythe. Artifact Vehicle 3-1 for 3, Flying has Invasion Beams, and when it enters battlefield, create a 2-2 Black Necron Warrior Artifact Creature Token, crew it for 2. And Defile, instant for a single Black Target Creature, gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn for each Swamp you control. Dread Return, Sorcery for 4, return Target Creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, has Flashback, so sacrifice 3 creatures. And Cranial Plating, okay, nice new artwork for this one. Artifact Equipment for two. Quick Creature gets plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control for two black. Attach Cranial Plating to target creature you control. Equip it for one. And Hedron Archive, another reprint here. Artifact for four. Tap for two colors for two taps. Sack it, draw two cards. And Mask of Memory, Artifact Equipment for two. Whenever a quick creature do is combat damage to a player, you may draw two cards. If you do, discard a card, equip it for one. And Soul Ring! Nice! Look at that. Artifact for one. Tap for two colorless. And that's one that pretty much slots into every commander deck. We've got a Baron Moor land. So just a random land chucked in the middle. Enter the full tap. Tap for black. Cycle it for a single black. Myriad Landscape, land, enters battlefield, tap, tap for colors for two, tap, sack it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards that show land type, put them onto battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And Reliquary Tower, I'm liking all these reprints here with the unique artwork. Land, you have no maximum hand size, tap for colorless. And Darkness, instant for a single black, prevent all combat damage that be dealt this turn. Go for the throat, instant for two, destroy target non-artifact creature, and arcane signet, artifact for two, tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. We've got commander's sphere, artifact for three, tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, sack it, draw a card, so that's another one you'll see along with the uh, signet in most commander decks. Mind stone, artifact for two, tap for colors for one, tap. Sack it, draw a card. 
And Thought Vessel, Artifact for two, you have Nomad, some hand size, tap for colorless. Unstable Obelisk, Artifact for three, tap for colorless, for seven, tap, sack it, destroy target permanent, and Wayfarer's Bauble, okay. Artifact for one, for two, tap, sack it, search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And Desert of the Glorified, it's a land desert, enters battlefield, tapped, Tap for black, cycle for one and a black. Polluted Mire enters tapped, tap for black and cycle for two. Vault of Whispers, this one's an artifact land, tap for black. So anything with like an artifact land type, uh, you can also apply artifact effects to those. We've got Anrak here, the Traveler, legendary artifact creature Necron, four, 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 five. Lord of the Pyrian Legions, whenever Anrak the Traveller attacks, you may cast an artifact spell from your hand or graveyard by paying life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. And Biotransference, enchantment for four. Creatures you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And whenever you cast an artifact spell, you lose one life and create a 2-2 Black Necron Warrior Artifact Creature Token. And Chronomancer, Artifact Creature Necron Wizard, 1-1 one, one for 2, has Flying and Atomic Transmutation. For 1, tap, sack another artifact, you get to draw a card. Also has Unearth for 2 and a Black. Cryptech, Artifact Creature Necron Wizard, awesome. 3-3 three, three for 4, for 1 and a Black, tap, choose another target artifact creature you control. When that creature dies this turn, return it to the field tapped under your control. And Illuminor Zerez, legendary artifact creature Necron, 3-3 three, three for 3, has Secrets of the Soul, tap, sack another creature, add an amount of black mana equal to the sacrifice creature's mana value. And Locust Heavy Destroyer, artifact creature Necron, 3-2 for 4, has flying and Enmitic Exterminator. So when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Unearth for five and three black. We got Lich Guard, artifact creature Necron, two, three for three. Has Guardian Protocols for three and a black. Sack it, return all legendary creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Holy moly, that's pretty crazy. Necron Deathmark, Artifact Creature Necron 5, 3 for 5, has Flash and Synaptic Disintegrator, so when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target creature, and target player mills three cards. We've got Necron Overlord, Artifact Creature Necron Noble, 2, 5 for 4, has Relentless March for X, tap, tap X, untap artifacts you control, you get to uh, make the opponent lose X life. Out of the Tombs, Enchantment for 3. At the beginning of your upkeep, put two con, or not con, Eon Counters on Out of the Tombs, then mill cards equal to the number of Eon Counters on it. If you draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If you can't, you lose the game. And Royal Warden, Artifact Creature Necron 3 2 for 5. Phalanx Commander, so when Royal Warden enters the battlefield, create two tapped 2-2 two, two black Necron Warrior Artifact Creature Tokens, unearth for three and a black. Shard of the Nightbringer, Creature Catan, 8-8-4-8, eight, 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 flying, has drain life, so when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, target opponent loses half their life, round it up, you gain life equal to the life loss this way. And Shard of the Void Dragon, Creature Catan 7747 Flying has Spear of the Void Dragon, so whenever Shard of the Void Dragon attacks, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent. Also has Matter Absorption, whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, or is put into exile from the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on Shard of the Void Dragon. We've got Scorpec Lord, Artifact Creature Necron Noble 3-2 for 3 with Menace has command protocols, other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and have menace you can unearth for two and a black. Technomancer, artifact creature Necron Wizard, five one for seven. When it enters battlefield, mill three cards and return any number of artifact creature cards with total mana value six or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
And their name is Death. Sorcery 4-6. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. Their number is Legion. Sorcery for X and 4 black. Create X tapped 2-2 two, two black Necron Warrior artifact creature tokens. Then you gain life equal to the number of artifacts you control. Excel their number is Legion. You may cast their number as Legion from your graveyard. And Tomb Blade. Artifact creature Necron 5-4 for 6 flying when it deals combat damage to a player. That player loses life equal to the number of creatures they control unless they sacrifice a creature. Unearth for 6 and 2 black. And Trezin the Infinite. Legendary artifact creature Necron 4-6 for 6 with Death Touch. Has Prismatic Gallery. As long as it is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all artifact cards in your graveyard. Let's have a quick Pringling check here. So you can see already we've got quite some curvature there. So what you'd want to do is put this in a box with a um, one of those humidity packet things to make them go back to normal. Then you would want to uh, make sure you double sleeve those with perfect fit sleeves and regular sleeves. Okay, so let's get through the rest here. We have Triarch Stalker, Artifact Creature Necron 4-5 for 5. Has Targeting Relay at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose an opponent. Creatures attacking the last chosen player have Menace. And the War in Heaven, Enchantment Saga for 6. So on the first turn you draw 3 cards, lose 3 life. Second turn, mill 3 cards. Third turn, choose up to 3 target creature cards with total mana value 8 or less in your graveyard. Return each of them to the battlefield with a Necrodermis counter on it. The artifacts in addition to their other types. So have we seen the deal with the Necrodermis counters, I wonder? We've got uh, Canoptic Scarab Swarm, Artifact Creature Insect 1-1 one, one for 4, Flying has Feeder Mandibles. When it enters the battlefield, Exile target player's graveyard for each artifact or land card. So this way, create a 1-1 one, one colorless insect artifact creature token with Flying. So this would be good in a mirror match. Uh, your opponent's busily stuffing their graveyard and you say, nope, you don't get access to any of that. Next up we've got Canoptic Spider, Artifact Creature Spider, 4-4 four, four for 5, Flying, has Fabricator Claw Array. Whenever another non-token Artifact Creature or Vehicle enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. And Canoptic Tomb Sentinel, Artifact Creature Insect, 4-3 for 4, four has Vigilance and Exile Cannon. So when it enters battlefield from a graveyard exile to one target non-land permanent unearth for seven. And Chronoptic Wraith. Artifact creature Wraith 2-1 for three. Wraith form. It can't be blocked. And it also has transdimensional scout. So when it deals combat damage to a player, you may pay three and sacrifice it. If you do, search your library for up to two basic land cards with the same name as the land you control. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. And Convergence of Dominion, Artifact for 3, has Dynastic Command Node. As long as you control your commander, activate abilities of cards in your graveyard cost 2 less to activate this effect. Can't reduce the mana in that ability's activation cost to less than 1 mana. Also has Translocation Protocols for 3, tap, mill 3 cards. And we've got Crypto Thrall, Artifact Creature Construct, 3, 3, 4, has Protector, other artifact creatures you control have Hexproof. Ghost Ark, that's pretty cool. Artifact Vehicle 3-3 three, three, for 4, Flying Repair Barge. So whenever, whenever it becomes crude, each artifact creature card in your graveyard ga gains unearth 3 until end of turn. You can crew it for 2. Necron Monolith. Artifact Vehicle 7-7 seven, seven for 7, Flying and Indestructible. Has Eternity Gate, so... Whenever it attacks, mill three cards for each creature card mill this way. Create a 2-2 black Necron Warrior Artifact Creature Token. Crew it for four. And Resurrection Orb. Artifact Equipment for two. Equip Creature has lifelink. Whenever a Equip Creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And it has a Equip Cost of four. Scepter of Eternal Glory. I think this is one of the higher end cards in the set. Legendary Artifact for four. Tap to add one mana of any one color and at, tap to add three mana of any one color activate only if you control three or more lands with the same name so you can see that's going to be versatile in a lot of commander decks tomb fortress it's a land enters the battlefield tap tap for black for two and three black tap exile it mill four cards and return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield activate only as a sorcery 
Beacon of Unrest. Sorcery for five. Put target artifact or creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Shuffle Beacon of Unrest into its owner's library. And Living Death. Sorcery for five. Each player exiles all creature cards from their graveyard. Then sacrifices all creatures they control. Then puts all cards out. So this way onto the battlefield. And Mutilate. Sorcery for four. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp you control. Caged Sun, that's an artifact for six. As it enters the battlefield, choose a colour. Creatures you control of the chosen colour get plus one, plus one. And whenever a land's ability causes you to add one or more mana of the chosen colour, add an additional mana of that colour. Endless Atlas, artifact for two. For two, tap, draw a card, activate only if you control three or more lands with this same name. And Gilded Lotus, look at that. Nice, artifact for five. Tap to add three mana of any one colour. Mystic Forge, Artifact for four. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast Artifact Spells and Colours Spells from the top of your library. Tap, pay one life, exile the top card of your library. And Sculpting Steel, Artifact for three. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the battlefield. Okay, so that's the main part of the deck. Now we'll take a look at the mana base. So we'll take a look at the nice artwork here. So Swamp's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You get the idea. Eight, nine, ten. So we've got 30 swamps there. Holy moly. A lot of basics. And the tokens here are pretty cool. We've got a Necron Warrior. Two, two, token artifact creature, Necron Warrior. On the other side, we have an Insect Flying 1-1. One, one. Okay, and the Necron Warrior Insect. So, what is this? We've got three, four, five. How many are we getting? Six, seven, nine, ten. Okay, ten tokens. Holy cow, lots of Insects and Necron Warriors. And this is a little reference card on your turn, so the parts of a turn, and popular magic formats. Okay, so other than the uh, very obvious curling here, which you can address, but it takes a bit of work, I would say this deck looks absolutely fantastic. This is one, if you're usually fond of the graveyard strategies, like you're stuffing a graveyard, bringing creatures back, you can also hose your opponent by exiling their graveyard. Uh, we've got lots of insect creatures and necrons. So if you're a fan of the necrons from Warhammer 40k, this may be the deck for you. And like I said, there is a non-foil version available. Those are going for close to 90 bucks at this point. I would actually recommend that over the uh, foiling version here. I don't know that that really adds a lot. Let me know in the comments section below what you think and stay tuned. We'll be cracking open the remaining three decks for the rest of this weekend. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.